Okay, in this video, we're going to go over quickly on a route. We're going to do a, a route to, let's say I'm going to go from here to um, Orlando Executive. I think I'm going to do that, or even just Orlando, period. Right now, we're sitting at uh, FXE, our home airport. I'm going to zoom in on there. There goes the airport diagram. Uh, with the taxi layouts and the name of the taxiways and the buildings and as you update these units they constantly you know there's a change of name you wanna also uh, update your your charts on here for the airport diagrams so I'm gonna go and hit the direct button which is a D that has an arrow going through it it's to the right of the power button so I hit that and I'm going to go from here to MCO or KMCO, that's uh, Orlando. So I'm going to hit enter where it's highlighted, where it says KAA. I'm going to change up and down arrows to the MCO. All right, as I scroll up. And, and you can see underneath, it shows you what's the possible combination of the letters what could be the identifier or airport or what you're looking for so as it changes name right there Orlando International and I'll hit enter there I can go to go to right now but let's say I want to look at the details so I can tab over to, to show details I hit enter on there it shows me the airport information the tower frequency what kind of airport it is, if it's public, private, uh, also what fuel's available at the airport and elevation. But I want to see like the frequencies, it shows you all the frequency. I want to see the runways. It shows you the traffic pattern. As you can see, depending on what direction you're coming in, if you're, heading, you're flying north, you're going to be entering a uh, left, left hand pattern. If you're flying in from the south, you're going to be coming in and doing a right hand pattern depending which runway is active at the time. Uh, that's runway 18 left or 36 right. So, and it tells you what kind of surface, hard surface, the length, width of the runway, what kind of lighting system they have, if it's uh, partial or full time. And it shows you again the traffic pattern, left 18, you know, if you're flying 18 left or right hand, 36 right. Um, what approach is available for this runway, uh, 17 left? But if I highlight that, I can hit enter, and it shows me the different uh, approaches available at the MCO. Now, um, the the pad, the instrument approaches on here are only approaches from the miss um, from the final approach fix, which is usually when you're starting to head down on, let's say, on ILS. That final approach fix to the miss approach point, which is usually the runway. It's not the full instrument approach, so please do not use your GPS for primary navigation. That's why you have your charts with you. That's why you're in an IFR aircraft. Again, because the Garmin 496 and all the Garmin handhelds are VFR only units. Um, as I go back up, here goes the AOPA directory. Shows me all the services and what's what's available there. Runway information. Um, who's their FBOs, times of operation, what services they provide, and so forth. The METAR, right now it's simulated, but it shows you the ATIS frequency, what is the current uh, uh, weather at the airport, uh, which is again it's simulated. It shows you uh, where the winds are, 120, 110 knots, 7 miles, uh, rain, few clouds at 1,000. Scattered at 4,300, scattered at 5,000. Uh, temperature dew point, the pressure, and any remarks after that. Then you get the terminal area forecast, which is these are part of the the aviator light or the LT package. So you, you get that with the low, low end package. This is the city forecast, what the, the city of Orlando is going to experience in the next couple of days. Again, this is simulated, so it's not current and back to the airport information. So, now that I see all that information, I can go ahead and say OK, go to go to, and now the unit's going to draw me a line uh, to 
the airport, which is of course to that airport. So I can zoom out as far as I want and see where it takes me all the way up that way. But I want to modify this flight plan. So I hit the page button. It goes to the terrain page. It goes to the instrument page, uh, which is everybody likes. The basic six, basically. Um, here you go, the active flight plan. But I want to go and insert a waypoint, be it a VOR, an intersection, NDB, or another airport. So I hit, uh, I have MCO highlighted. I hit menu once. I go insert waypoint, enter, and now I'm going to put in uh, PHK. So again, I, highlight, I press enter up there, and I go here and I look for my the lettering for my identifier until so I get it. There you go, Pahokee. It's a high altitude VOR. It shows me my, the distance from my current location on the bottom left, 45 miles, and the bearing to it, which is 327 degrees. So that's what I'm looking for. So I hit that enter. I said OK. And now that's added into my flight plan. Now if I go back to the page for the map, I zoom out further out, and actually it's showing you all the simulated weather, I'm just going to take that right off, so I hit menu once, and press enter on high weather, so there we go, we're hiding the weather, and you see it draws a line from FXE to Pahokee, and then from Pahokee to Orlando, that's basically the simplest way to make a flight plan, you can add more waypoints along your, your flight plan, and as you do, it saves it in your unit. Um, so for later on, when you need to fly that same route, or you're going to follow that same route, you can use that as uh, your flight plan again in the Garmin GPS 496.